Um, so I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through a few tips and tricks that I think are um, really important for um, making cheese in this heat wave or saving cheeses that you already have made. Um, so the first thing really is try not to make cheese during this hot of weather, like it's 43 degrees Celsius here today. Personally, I would not be making cheese, um, but if you already have cheese going or have cheese that you made a couple days ago, um, these things will hopefully help you. Um, so first thing, it starts off in the barn. So you normally, on a good day, on a just any normal day, I always say get that milk from the udder to the cheese pot or the fridge within half an hour. So that is the amount of time that it's going to take you to get it all cleaned and up from the barn. And that kind of, um, that half an hour window is a really nice window to prevent uh, bacteria that are environmentally introduced, bacteria that are already in the milk from kind of starting to thrive and take hold in the milk and kind of get the monopoly. So um, during this heat weather, it needs to be a lot quicker than that. So it should be as quick as you can get it out of the udder and then back up to the house into the cheese pot or into the fridge. So um, if you are doing cheese making that day, you might want to consider adding your lactic bacterial in straight off the bat as soon as you get it into the cheese pot before you even start to heat it or anything so by adding that lactic bacteria into your cheese it gets a jump start it starts to work as soon as the milk is the temperature where it can start to work so um, for mesophilic or thermophilic you've got a range of temperature that is ideal for those types of bacterial culture but they actually start to work a lot sooner than that so um, that just gives you a little bit of um, more of a referee in your milk so that yeasts or other contaminants can't um, start working before them. Um, what else can I tell you here? So choosing cheeses that are salted early on in the cheese making process is going to help you um, pre prevent contamination a lot better. So that would be like a cheddar or a feta, something that is being salted as soon as it's coming out of the cheese pot versus maybe like a Gouda or a Colby that is going to be pressed and then salted. And so the reason that I recommend that is because the salt is actually acting as a regulator for that bacteria in your cheese and your bacteria is working at an accelerated rate at this temperature. The bacteria loves heat. It loves, well, I mean, it loves heat in a, in a, um, how should I say it? Um, in, it, in its range, but this is basically, this temperature right now is basically every bacteria's range. They love it right now. So um, yeast loves it, bacteria loves it. So being able to add that salt in there is just going to start to regulate everybody. And um, so that's why you should choose cheeses that are regulated a little bit earlier. Um, so where if you would normally have, say, made a Gouda and you're taking it out of the pot, you're putting in the cheese press for eight hours and then you're putting it into a brine, well, it's working at such a rate that you're probably going to have some contamination or you have a higher risk of a contamination because it's actually moving down that pH line a lot faster than it normally would on a good temperature day. Um, so what else can I tell you here? Um, so... Also, pressing your cheeses and drying your cheeses in a temperature-controlled environment. So normally it's okay to um, have your cheese press on the counter, have your um, drying rack on the counter, but during these hot temperatures, again, you want to be putting them into a temperature-controlled environment because they are, those bacteria are working at an accelerated rate. Um, and then how do you know that something is amiss? How do you know that um, your cheese has been contaminated or is on the track to be contaminated? Um, so I would say the first thing would be cat fur mold. So cat fur mold, um, I've shown it on here a few times. It's this very long, fast growing, looks like cat hair um, type of mold. And that mold loves a hot, humid environment. So the first thing I always ask when I see cat fur mold is, did I salt this cheese properly? If the answer to that is yes, then that's perfectly fine. But then I need to be asking myself, why is this cat fur mold growing? Is it too hot? Is it too humid? What can I change in the environment to make um, this cat, make it not so that this cat fur mold grows? And so the cat fur mold itself is not necessarily dangerous, but it's the, it's the um, situation that that cheese is in that opens it up to other contaminants like bacteria and yeast that also love that same environment that cat fur mold loves in. So um, what I do is if I see cat fur mold, I know that I've salted that cheese properly, I'm just going to scrape it off or 
um, rub it off with like a paper towel. Those spores of cat fur mold are very, um, they, they float around, so don't do it near any other cheeses. Um, but so I do that and then I wash it off with an 18% brine and then I'm moving it into a temperature controlled environment. So whether that's my fridge or a cellar, um, something like that where um, it is not going to be so hot, it's not going to be so humid. Um, but yeah, as I said, I, it's not necessarily dangerous, but it's just an indicator of what's going on in your cheese and what could come in and thrive during, um, during that kind of environmental state. Um, and what, so early blowing, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here. So early blowing um, is something that I actually have a blog post on my blog about. So um, it's basically caused by either yeast or coliform bacteria. And I'm actually getting a ton of pictures and comments from people saying that their cheese is going through early blowing. So basically it's when a contaminant comes in in the first one to two days of your cheese making, your cheese kind of balloons up and um, is unfortunately contaminated with those things. Yeast, um, yeast caused early blowing is not necessarily dangerous. They don't tend to age super well, but that being said, I just opened one up the other day that had some early blowing or, um, like three months ago or something. And you can taste a t like a tinge of yeast in there, but it's not super bad. Um, if it's a severe case of early blowing though, you probably just want to throw it out. It's not going to age very good. But uh, if you are vacuum sealing it, it's worth a try. Just throwing in a vacuum seal bag and see what it tastes like in three months. Um, so I got off on a tangent there. So, and then uh, just go and read that. If you are experiencing early blowing, go and read that blog post that I have because I talk about um, how you're going to distinguish if it's yeast or if it's coliform because that's always a big question and an important question that you need to ask. And especially in this hot weather where if you're not getting your milk from the barn to the cheese pot as quickly as um, as you should really, then you can have a risk of coliform contamination because virtually all raw milk actually has coliform in it. Um, it's just whether that coliform bacteria actually gets a chance to thrive. And um, so last thing, just checking on your cheeses that are already aging. So I just ran over and checked on um, some um, I just keep them over at Zach's mom's house, so I just ran over and checked on them. They're in a fridge there. Just making sure in these hot temperatures that your fridge isn't going to um, quit or um, like they're not going to overheat. So I actually have a really interesting picture. <laughs> I actually have a really interesting picture, I'll have to try and find it, of um, some cheeses that I had overheat when I was storing them in my pantry probably about three or four years ago. And so when I went and looked at them, the uh, vacuum seal bags had actually ballooned up. And so when I cut them open, there was a large split across them. And so this, like on the interior, and so this split is actually a yeast split and it's caused by yeast contamination, a thriving of yeast, usually like later on in the aging when um, the temperatures get to be too high. And so um, a yeast split is pretty indicative of, um, of uh, increased temperature um, and uh, yeah. So I think that's all that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So um, stay cool and hopefully you can rescue your cheeses and um, can all resume cheese making as normal in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, I'll try and get that blog post up soon.